Welcome back to the show. Let's go. Line number three, Brenda Kitchen, you're on the air. Hi, Patty. How you doing? Doing okay, thanks. How about you? I'm not too bad. I've been pretty busy, busier than a one-legged man in a butt kitten contest, I tell you. <laughs> We've I'm been familiar. Um, Sorry, go ahead. I'm familiar with that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm with a group called Protect NL, Protect Newfoundland and Labrador, and we've, we're launching an island-wide rally this August. Uh, all the information is on a website, www.rallyfortherock.com. It's going to be in August, August 23rd to the 31st. We're going from Codroy right to St. John's, over 10 communities. Uh, because what's happening is people are getting more and more concerned about these wind energy deals. They're asking questions, and they keep getting ignored or dismissed by the government. They're getting the runarounds from the companies. And we still, like, this is almost like a year later since, like, I've come on board, and uh, we still can't get any answers on the blades, what's going to happen to those blades and the decommissioning of these projects. What does that mean, though? uh, Are you talking about cost coverage for the reclaiming of the land or any of the work that has to be done to bring it back to as close as they can to its original pristine beauty? So what does that mean, the concern with decommissioning? Well, I'm talking about decommissioning. Yes, exactly what you just said, restoration or reclamation. We're not getting any answers on what company's plans are on that. And the blades, Patty, the blades. Like uh, how many times we've been trying to figure out what's going on with these blades and now we know of uh, at least six companies coming to the areas. And once we look at their information, because as time goes on, we are finding out more and more information. With the six companies, we're looking at 3,833 turbines times three blades. That's 11,499 blades with absolutely no plans of how they're going to get rid of it. So, you know, to be have these very, very important questions continue to be ignored by government and the company i'm telling you the momentum is really building and more and more people are questioning these wind energy deals and why are we moving forward so unregulated in this rush uh, for green energy so like people are really questioning that and they're going out they're having demonstrations to raise awareness that you know if these wind energy deals proceed unchecked we really feel that it's going to destroy Newfoundland and Labrador. So, we're st- like you say, we're not getting any of our questions answered. There's demonstrations happening now. There's towns on the Buren Peninsula rescinding earlier support for Everwind because as we find out more information, because we're the ones that's digging, we're seeing that there's nothing good about these projects. So uh, we got a real big warning to the government and the wind energy companies if they continue not to listen to the public and push ahead without regulations, they're going to face a very difficult road ahead. So, like, that's the main reason why we're having Rally for the Rock. we got to keep talking to the people because the government, they just ignored those 15 appeals. They're not listening to us. They're determined to move forward anyway. They're not leaders in green energy. They need to be looking around the country at the people who are leaders and learn from them and learn from their renewable energy legislation. That's the other thing. We're going to be carrying around a provincial petition, and we're going to need thousands of signatures to influence government, force the hand of government to have legislation in place before proceeding with these projects. Just Let's not. dig into a couple of things uh, one by one. So you mentioned the number of wind turbine blades, and that, of course, is if every single project maxima, maxes out their proposal. So there's a lot of distance between then and now, I would suggest. So also in the world of reclamation, I've asked this question directly of the minister responsible at the time, Andrew Parsons, at this time, Andrew Parsons, about exactly that. So whether it be the companies themselves pay for the infrastructure for connecting to the grid and or end of life. And the thought is, and the pledge by the provincial government, and I've asked this almost every single time I've spoken to the minister, is that the companies need to put forward the monies up front for end-of-life decommissioning. So that's a pretty important facet. We don't know exactly how much, whether it be staged. Like if we talk World Energy GH2, they've got three phases. So whether it be upfront monies for liabilities for phase one same thing for phase two same thing for phase three we don't know so that's one thing end of life for the wind turbines 
I think we may be in a position where some people say there's absolutely nothing could be recycled inside a wind turbine, whether it be the steel stanchion and or the generator and or the electrical components and or the steel bolts and or the composite blades themselves. I think isn't true. I think there's more and more being done with these wind turbines as years go by. I mean, of course, if you're talking green, and if the play 10 years ago was a decommissioned wind turbine got buried, that's not green. Burying a turbine is the furthest thing from green. So it's an important point you make. But I think advancements are being made all the time on that. I don't know if you look at the Canadian Renewable Association's website, but I check in on it as much as I can handle just to see where the processes are going, how they're being improved. So I think those two things, the companies are liable up front for putting aside the monies, whether it be in a bond or whatever the case may be for end of life, and or the recycling component of these turbines themselves. What do you think? Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot of really great points there, Patty. Um, if Minister Parsons is saying there's going to be, the company is going to be asked for money up front for decommissioning, I would love to see that in writing because, quite frankly, I don't trust I don't trust what these people are saying anymore because it seems like they're just saying whatever they think we need to hear um, without any substance to it. So I'm so happy that you keep bringing that up. And uh, I'd like to push Minister Parsons just a little bit farther. And let's get something legal and in writing that the companies have to abide by. And that's what Alberta is doing now with their renewable energy legislation. Um, you mentioned about the blades and, you know, yes, this is only if this is a work. I guess this is the best case scenario for the companies because if they move forward, that's all the turbines that they'll have. But uh, despite the fact that there could be a time gap between now and when these companies start, that is the time that we need to address. Look, if the blades are recyclable, great, recycle them. Where are they going to get recycled to? And two, if the blades aren't recyclable, they're not going in the ground here in Newfoundland and Labrador. So what are you going to do with them? We have the power and the authority and the ability to mandate these companies, if they're not recyclable, to take them out of Newfoundland. Like, there's so many times before that we've been treated like people want to bring their garbage here and just leave it here and use us as a dump site. The fact that there is a time gap, that's fine. That gives us time now to put the proper legislation in place to protect the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. These companies are going to be trying to make the most money they can. Often recycling is very expensive. If we got nothing in writing, the company is not the ones looking out for our best interest. It's supposed to be our government. And for the people listening to this, the government is not looking out for our best interest when it comes to these wind energy deals. And that's why we're doing Rally for the Rock. Because if we want to influence the outcome of these deals, it's the people. It's the people that's going to have to come together and sign this petition. We need 10,000 or more signatures because the government seems to be determined to just push ahead anyway without the right legislation in place to protect us. No one can argue against your concept of needing things in writing because this is a contractual arrangement. At this moment in time, being released from an environmental assessment is straight up baby steps. Whether or not the actual business model is going to work for the traditional lender is yet to be understood. I mean, we've only heard of some very minimal investment dollars coming into the proponents here in this province. I know everyone is moving forward pretty quickly in Nova Scotia. But getting things in writing, of course, whether it be about end of life, whether it be about money for reclamation, whether it be about uh, access to water, the leased land, because I think there's some confusion there too. Like, if the contract, say, with Crown Lands, no one's purchasing any Crown Land, it's simply a lease of Crown Land, and it has to be for a uh, very specific purpose. If it's not for these proposals of wind to hydrogen to ammonia for export, then they don't get to lease the Crown Land. And if it's talk about access to water, the big co- problem there for me is that they've got to see 100% cost recovery of their initial investment before our royalties kick in, which are also very minimal. And for World Energy GH2, it's an old uh, industrial reservoir, and their plans say they don't even have the opportunity to use all the water inset reservoir in fact a fairly minimal percentage of the water available but all those things have to be addressed you're right no one's going to just hope for, hope for the best and take their word for it why would we would well, be foolish now we've proven to be foolish in the past but we can't be on this one so if there's t's to be crossed and i's to be dotted and more questions to be answered fair ball and we can have those conversations here but i think we can be pretty If we want to be, we can be pretty aggressive in how the contracts are structured. I'll also add, and then I'll give you the final word, I haven't heard anything from another party that says we are not doing it. 
people have questions. People talk about these different complexities and different moving parts. Fair enough. But I haven't heard a party say, we are not interested. We will uh, renege these approvals and we're never going to do it here in the province. Because I haven't heard that, which I think is another part of the political calculation. Uh, Brenda, I'll give you the final thoughts before I have to go. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate that. Um, so you mentioned about you know, the companies not having to pay royalties and after co- af- until after their cost recovery, which could be 30 years or the life of the project, for goodness sakes. Um, I just want to point out that even if people are in favor of these wind energy deals, it's a horrible deal that our government has negotiated. And um, for anybody who wants to continue to move forward with wind energy, like we have to set a clear and responsible path forward for renewable project development. And we can stop things now and we can get renewable energy legislation in place to protect the people. So for anybody that wants to learn more, just go to www.rallyfortherock.com and find out if we're coming to your community, sign the petition. We need to get more information out to the people. It's the people that's going to influence the outcome of these wind energy deals. I appreciate the time. Thanks for the call, Brenda. Thank you, Patty. Take good care. All right. Bye-bye. There we go.